Today we have some more information about Nintendo Switch 2, some reconfirmations of some stuff that we've already heard, but now maybe you're hearing it in a more concrete light. Oh, and by the way, yeah, we already know what the big Nintendo Switch launch game is going to be. We don't have to speculate, we don't have to guess, we were just straight up told. This is pretty cool stuff. Now, remember, you know, if you're hearing this for the first time from me, I will probably be like third hand information for you. Of course, we will have all these sources linked down in the description like we always do. You know, for the people out there that think I just make this stuff up. Hey, I always put my sources down in the description. That being said, we got to dump right into this after I remind you guys that, hey, we're on our road to 150,000 subscribers. So, you know what? If you're enjoying this content, why not go ahead and ringling the dingling and uh, hit the bell icon and subscribe to the channel? That'd be that'd be really swell. But let's get into this report that we have over at GoNintendo.com. Now, I want to note, of course, that GoNintendo here is not the source on this stuff. Uh, but they will be linked as well. They just have a really nice summary. So it says the Switch successor rumors continue with talks of storage, screen size, and 3D Mario. Time for the next round of Switch successor rumors, gang. Once again, please remember that none of this information is confirmed at this point. The only thing we know for sure is that Nintendo is indeed working on hardware that will supplant the Switch. Yes, Nintendo technically said that back in 2021. Now, the where, when, how, what are all speculation at this point. Now, with that out of the way, the latest details on the supposed Switch successor come from insiders Nate the Hate and Andy Robinson from Video Game Chronicle, and they pertain to some tech specs, software, and more. Here's a roundup of the information that was shared. The device will have an 8-inch LCD screen. The device will have 512 gigabytes of internal storage. Remember, when we talked about this before, it was up to. We'll get to why it sounds like this might be more concrete in a moment. A late 2024 launch is expected somewhere around September or October. The device is supposedly launching with a 3D Mario, which, by the way, is backed up by three to four sources. The device will use a new cartridge format. And as you see, Nate, hey, VGC, and a little bit of a reset era goodness now one thing i do want to note here over at the reset era breakdown is there's this really really interesting look at this right here the screen size comparison so this green area is the 6.2 inch original switch and this would be the 8 inch which of course looks monstrous compared to that but actually here's a nice little overlay of a current switch like you know here here's what the screen size was here's what it could be and as you see it would probably require a bigger switch, but if it's a more bezel-less design, eight inches is right about keeping a very similar form factor of the current Switch OLED. And remember, the Switch OLED is technically a smidge bigger, uh, and so I feel like this would probably be a smidge bigger than a Switch OLED. But yeah, that's a really good look at the screen size comparison to the OG Switch and what the eight-inch one would be. Just kind of putting that out there so you guys can see it. Now, my thing that I really want to focus on is, is why are we definitive about some of this stuff? Well, the 8-inch screen that's you know that we all heard on the Neat the Hate podcast, Andy Robinson's corroborating that. He's saying, yeah, 8 inches. That's exactly what all my sources said. And by the way, Andy Robinson this whole time has now confirmed all his sources are developers with actual dev kits, and several of them. He's got like four, five, six different sources on all of this stuff and they're all saying eight inch lcd that's what it's going to be cool now again lcd doesn't mean it can't end up being oled down the line we don't know but anyways this is just what the dev kits are at the moment and he went on to say 512 gigabytes yeah so when nate the hate brought it up he said up to 512 he just straight up says dude 512 gigabytes of internal storage yep that's exactly what all of my people tell me too so it's it's very obvious that Andy's like, hey, I know a bunch of people with dev kits. This is what's in their dev kits. Now, of course, dev kits tend to be over-spec'd compared to final release. So it might not be 512, but that's what it is at the moment. And obviously, the biggest part in all of this is the launch game, the 3D Mario. It should come as no surprise that 3D Mario is going to be a launch game. 
look, they can't be Zelda because Zelda just came out and they're not going to have another one of those ready to go like they did at launch of the Nintendo Switch. And look, they like to have a massive game at launch. And if they do a September release, what's really cool is they could do a Mario game. You know, you see Mario Odyssey behind me. Mario Odyssey has sold like 26, almost 27 million copies. 3D Mario is a big deal to have at launch and it really hits on the hardcore fan base. So I really do think that this is not only what I always thought would be a launch game, we now have some confirmation that this is indeed going to end up being the launch title. And what's really cool about that is if there's also a Pokemon game next winter, if this launches in September, in theory, you could have 3D Mario and Pokemon within like the first three months of launch, which would just be massive. Now, Pokemon is likely to be a cross-generation title, so it might not be as big of a deal for the new system as 3D Mario will be in terms of moving units, but there's going to be other games that are coming out along the line. A lot of people are starting to suspect Metroid Prime 4 could possibly be a cross-gen title, but there's going to be exclusives, and I think the way Nintendo's lining this up, if we look at the games they have coming out, a lot of their bigger IPs are just like not doing anything. I'll give you an example. Kirby and the Forgotten Land came out, right? Where's our brand new Kirby game since then? Probably going to end up on the new system. Yeah, so we just have to take all of this into consideration when we're talking about uh, the Nintendo Switch 2 is that Nintendo's got a plan and that plan is going to be executed pretty well. Now, there's been a lot of debate, of course, online about backwards compatibility. And I will note, it wasn't in this report, but Andy Robinson on his podcast that he was on did say that he has one source that has told him there will not be backwards compatibility. And the way he phrased it is, this person with a dev kit was told that there won't be backwards compatibility. But then he went on to note, by the way, I have three to four other developers telling me there is backwards compatibility. And that's why we're kind of in this conundrum of will there or won't there be backwards compatibility. Now, what was interesting is he also elaborated on the third-party developers being worried about backwards compatibility. And he basically said, yeah, a bunch of third-party developers don't want backwards compatibility. And they told Nintendo they don't want it because they're seeing a really poor software attach rate with the PlayStation 5. And I do find that to be a very curious thing to talk about. I, I, I think the bigger issue for PlayStation 5 isn't backwards compatibility. It's more cross-generation releases. Uh, let me put it this way. If you make a game, let's say Call of Duty, right? And you release Call of Duty on PlayStation 4 and Call of Duty on PlayStation 5. Yeah, the PlayStation 5 version is better, but there's that PlayStation 4 version. And you don't have a PS5 yet, and you bought that brand new Call of Duty game, and then... Let's say two months later, you upgrade to a PlayStation 5. Because there's backwards compatibility, you're just going to play the current Call of Duty you have, right? You're highly likely not going to buy a new version of a game you already own. So that would be the argument to hurt sales. But if you want to increase the attach rate, stop making your games cross-generation in the first place. Just make that Call of Duty exclusive to the new generation platforms, and now people will have to buy it on that platform. In fact, they will have to buy the platform to buy the game. So you end up helping each other. You will increase the attach rate and also increase the sales of the system. And this is one reason why, even if the system does have backwards compatibility, because backwards compatibility has been in literally... Video game consoles for decades. This is not a new concept, and there was never complaints about it hurting before, but we didn't always have cross-generational games, right? Like, oh, the Wii having backwards compatibility to the GameCube wasn't going to hurt Wii game sales because Wii games were not coming to the GameCube. See, that's the thing. And I, I feel like when we speculate that maybe Nintendo is going to have a year of doing cross-generation games, I just don't really see that. I think around launch, there will be some. I think a new Pokemon game will probably end up being cross-gen because the Pokemon company is really uh, sticklers about that. They, they don't want to get off the biggest hardware until the new hardware has a bigger install base. So I think that'll be cross-gen. I think a potential Metroid Prime 4 might move to cross-gen. And we might see maybe you know one other title. But for the most part, I think that that's going to be exclusives. They're going to come out the gate just like with the Switch, and they're going to hit you with a new game every month or every other month that's 100% exclusive to the system because one thing Nintendo has that other companies don't necessarily have are evergreen titles. 
all the titles from 2017, sounds like Splatoon 2 because it got replaced with Splatoon 3, are still selling units today at full price MSRP. So Nintendo doesn't have to worry that, no, oh, they're not going to have a 10 million launch like they did for Tears of the Kingdom at the launch of the new system because they know it's going to continue to sell over time. All they got to ensure is that the platform keeps growing, that people keep buying it. And the best way is exclusive games. And I don't know that Nintendo is going to go away from that. So while third parties might go cross-gen for a bit, that's on them. I would argue that for the most part, I don't think we're going to see a lot of cross-gen. And this is just a, a, a classic sign to me. If third-party developers are going to Nintendo saying, hey, we don't want backwards compatibility, Nintendo isn't dumb. They could probably look at that broader landscape of PS5 and realize, you know what, if your games weren't on PS4 in the first place, you'd have a better attach rate, wouldn't you? So I don't know. And Nintendo knows, of course, what they're doing. And look, they're going to blow the lid off this thing. I, I don't think they're going to let us know this year. I think we're going to find out about this early next year. But I am so excited to finally have tangible things to talk about with Nintendo Switch 2. Now, speaking of that, I do want to address... A little bit of the criticism I see in the comments when I make Nintendo Switch 2 videos. Heck, we had criticism just yesterday on a video that was a general news video that wasn't even about Nintendo Switch 2. Kind of weird. I want to I wanna address this criticism because of something I said. I stated last weekend on Sunday that I was getting a little tired of talking about Nintendo Switch 2. Well, today we got to talk about Nintendo Switch 2 again, and I, I'm going to be quite frank with you guys. This isn't a topic that I enjoy talking about this much. A few moments later. I got to be honest. I started this video by saying I'm sort of tired of talking about this damn thing because... It's getting old. More moments later. I don't know that I'm going to talk that much about Switch 2, barring some major report coming out from Bloomberg or uh, Jeff Grubb or, or, or someone like super reliable and in the know moving forward, barring some major report coming out from Bloomberg or uh, Jeff Grubb or, or, or someone like super reliable and in the know moving forward. Now, why was I getting tired of talking about Nintendo Switch 2? Because we seem to be going in circles without new information. So we would talk about it every time a new source would come out of the woodworks of, oh, the system might be unveiled here. Oh, the system might be unveiled there. Oh, uh, they're negotiating, uh, you know, earlier this year, one of the reports is, oh, they're negotiating uh, when they're going to end up going into mass production. They could go into mass production as soon as this summer. Oh, now they might not go into mass production until early next year. And we have these sort of outside reports that didn't really give us any real details of what the system was just more of a hey it's going to come out hey they're going to be mass produced and we were just running in circles and it got really boring to be honest continuing to just report on all those little tidbits out there even though i do want to give you guys all the latest information and latest sources on this system so i said i if you actually watch the whole video some of you only watch the first like minute if you watch the whole video towards the end, I mentioned we're not going to talk about Nintendo Switch 2 again until, until there is tangible, real sources from legit outlets doing it. I didn't know in less than 24 hours that article from Video Game Chronicle and Andy Robinson was going to happen. I was not in the know on that. So I it, it became sort of a bit of a ironic statement to say I'm done until something big happens and then something big happened from legit sources and it's been happening all week. Andy Robinson adding more information out there now. Obviously, Nate the Hate, who's been a very reliable insider, finally talking about stuff that he has heard about the system. And there's things he hasn't talked about yet, right? So there's going to probably be more from him later this year and more from this development. Now that the dev kits are out there, there's going to be even more information coming down the line. So the way I look at it is, yeah, we lucked into, <laughs> I will say, legit uh, or or... I guess I shouldn't say legit because this is technically all unconfirmed, but we lucked into <sighs> legitimate sources. We could say that on information. And it just ironically happened around the time that uh, I was saying I was a little bored of talking about it. But guess what? 
I'm not bored of it now. This is exactly what I needed. I needed real, tangible things to talk about. I can now talk about 3D Mario and what it might be. And is it going to be an Odyssey 2 or what kind of crazy stuff is it going to be? I can now talk about, you know, how they're going to use that 3D Mario and spin it into other games and during its first launch year. We can now talk about uh, more exact information on launch timing in terms of second half of 2024. We can now talk about the internal storage. We can talk about the screen technology. Like, we now have tangible details that, while unconfirmed and will stay unconfirmed until it's officially announced, are out there. And I love that. And that's what I wanted, guys. I was just tired of going in circles. And I'm sure you guys were tired of going in circles, too. Now, if you're tired of the reports this week, you're tired of these videos this week, you don't have to click on them, just to be honest. But I got to say, I you can't say it's not news. It's not news. Before this week, we didn't know from multiple sources that 3D Mario was going to be a launch game. We didn't know about LCD versus OLED. We didn't know about the 8-inch screen. We didn't know about the possibility of 512 gigabytes of internal storage. This is actual, tangible um, you know, rumors from legit sources that we can all talk about. So if you hate Switch 2 content, sorry to break it to you, we're going to have a lot of it. We're going to have a lot of Switch 2 content. Once the Mario Wonder news starts picking up, we're going to have a lot of Mario Wonder and Mario RPG news. We're going to be having tons of news from a Nintendo Direct likely happening next month. we got a Pokemon Presents we're going to be covering. Look, we have a lot of stuff we're going to cover, but yeah, you're going to see a lot of Switch 2 videos, maybe even daily for a while. It is what it is. I can't help it. I'm a technology enthusiast, and I'm ready for the next one of these, man. I'm so ready, and now we have some tangible stuff to talk about, and we're only going to get more. As Andy Robinson put on his own podcast over at Video Game Chronicles, he noted quite clearly the biggest reason he put this information out now wasn't to be first, but to encourage other people in this industry, in the video game media, to start unveiling the information they have. He just wanted the floodgates to open because maybe like me, he was tired of those little tinge fringe rumors out there about manufacturing. He's like, look, we have real information. Why don't we just give it to people? Give the people what they want. So uh, we're going to get more and more. Eurogamer already backed up the release timing, at least, from his article. So we already have another outlet talking about it a little bit. I fully expect Digital Foundry is going to put information out there. Remember, Digital Foundry is the one that told us about the Switch Pro dev units being recalled and obviously that whole project being canceled. So we are living in an era right now where Switch 2 floodgates are opening. Reality is we're going to be transitioning at some point next year. And hey, until then, let's enjoy our Tears of the Kingdom. Let's enjoy our Mario Wonders. Let's enjoy that new Peach game and you know, the Luigi Mansion port coming and Mario RPG. We still have plenty of games coming up for this system to enjoy. The current system, that is. But it's fun to be excited for what's next, guys. My channel really wasn't existing in the lead-up to the Nintendo Switch. So I've never actually been a YouTuber in the lead up to the launch of a new platform from Nintendo. And we're going to handle this the way that we handled the lead up to anything. We're going to talk and talk and talk and report and get excited with all of you. Thank you for being here. And I'll catch you in the next video.